Hello, my name is Bob Johnson with Microfocus Customer Support, and in this video we're going to demonstrate how to configure and use an identity card to release print jobs from a walk-up printer. In order to do this, you have to have the iPrint Appliance 3.x with the latest updates applied. You also need to have a walk-up printer created in the iPrint Appliance. You also need the RF Ideas Ethernet 241 device, as well as a supported card reader connected to the device. And you can refer to this website for the supported card readers. You also need a provisioned ID card, a source directory server, eDirectory or Active Directory. In our example, we will use an eDirectory server and obviously you need a network printer. Before we go into the actual configuration details, we'll just give a brief overview of the hardware requirements. You need obviously a network printer, which we have here, and then you need a card reader, which we're using the PC Props Plus card reader. And then the Ethernet 241 device itself, as seen here, fairly straightforward as far as connecting your network printer. All of the Ethernet jacks are labeled accordingly. You have the Ethernet cable that goes from your network printer into the device jack and then your network cable into the network jack. And then for the actual card reader, you can use either a serial or a USB card reader. We're using obviously a USB card reader for our demonstration. Once everything's connected, it's just a matter of plugging it in, and by default, when this boots up, uh, it'll get an IP address via DHCP, and uh, we'll show the utility used to configure the Ethernet 2.1 device to work with the iPrint appliance. Once you have all of the hardware pieces connected, the next thing you'll want to do is use this 241 discovery tool to locate the device on your network. This utility can be downloaded from the RF Ideas Ethernet 241 product support page, and here's the download link. Once you download it, you can launch the utility. Select the network that the device is connected to, click OK, and then just click Find Local 241 Devices, and this will give you the IP address of that device. As mentioned, by default, it gets its IP address via DHCP. Once the IP address has been learned, then you can simply put that IP address in a web browser and you'll be taken to a page like this, which is the Ethernet 241 configuration page. In order to get the Ethernet 241 device to work with the iPrint appliance, you'll refer to the steps in our documentation located at this URL. And the configuration in the 241 device is actually very simple. Um, you're simply clicking on the server tab and in the data server IP, you're putting in the IP address of the iPrint appliance. The data server port stays at the default of 80. The data server URL can be the IP address or host name of the appliance. And then you are copying this data server string from our documentation right here. And you're simply pasting that into this field here and then you're clicking update. And that is all the configuration you need to do from the Ethernet 241 perspective. Referring back to the documentation, the next step is to configure the iPrint appliance through the management console. So in the directory servers page, we're going to select the directory server to use for the card release. And in the server information tab, we specify the option to use card release for printing jobs. And then we provide the name of the attribute to which the value of the card is mapped. So if I jump back to the management console of my appliance, 
and I click on directory servers and I come into the details, notice that I've selected the option to use card release for printing jobs. And the attribute that I have mapped to each of my users is workforce ID. And within that workforce ID, there is a unique value for each user that corresponds to the card ID on the card. I'm not a card expert, and so I'm not sure exactly how cards are provisioned. I know there are utilities that will take care of that for you. In my case, I did this manually. So if we look in iManager on my source OES 2015 server and go to directory administration and I modify one of my users in the other tab, I will see a workforce ID attribute. And if I edit that value, that workforce ID corresponds to the card ID I have associated for this particular user. Once that information is set up and configured and you've made this selection and specified the correct attribute, then what you're going to do is synchronize this information to the appliance. You can click synchronize now. Because I've already done this and I have no changes in the environment, it, there's nothing to synchronize. You can see the status is successful. And then once that data gets populated into the directory of the iPrint appliance, then the next thing we have to do is verify that the users in our environment actually have access to the walk-up printer we've created. So if we launch iManager for the appliance, we can look at um, the ACLs for this particular walk-up printer. So under iPrint, Manage Printer, we browse to the walk-up printer and we're looking at access control. You'll want to make sure that the users you want to give access to this printer show up at least in the user role. And as you can see, for our test user, Bob, we've added him to the user role. So at this point, with the configuration as it now stands, we should be able to release a print job using our provisioned card for this user, Bob. To demonstrate this, we're going to use the new MicroFocus iPrint portal to submit a print job. And notice that when you are in this portal and you want to print to a walk-up printer and you mouse over these options, you have to log in to either install the printer or print to the printer. And again, for this example, we're just going to do a, a quick print. So the first thing I have to do is log in as my user which I've already done before, so everything's cached. And once I'm authenticated, I now have the ability to install or do a quick print. We'll use quick print to test this. And we'll simply drag and drop a file and choose print. Job submitted successfully. We can jump into the PSM status, uh, which is just the IP address of your appliance forward slash PSM status. And then uh, we can click on the walk-up printer link and job list. And we expect to see the job in a held status, which it is. So then our next step is to walk over to our device and release it with our provisioned ID card, which we will do now. To release the job, we just come over to the device touch the card to the reader. This process authenticates me to the appliance and with the card ID associated to the user who created the walk-up print job, the print job is then released and we have a successful print job. And now that our print job is printed successfully, if I refresh this screen, we would expect the job to be gone. This concludes the video on how to configure the RFIDs 
Ethernet 241 device to work with the iPrint appliance and how to use provisioned ID cards to release walk-up print jobs. If you're unfamiliar with the iPrint appliance, you can refer to the documentation. You can also go to YouTube and search for these uh, titles, which will bring you to instructional videos on how to configure an iPrint appliance. They were made specifically for the 2.0 version, but most of that information also applies to 3.x as well. I hope you found this information useful, and thank you for watching. Thank <music> you.